Hey everyone, I'm Carlos and welcome to a new book discussion of productbooklab.com. Every month we discuss online a book about product management together with the author and other product colleagues. If you want to find the recordings from our previous discussions and also join us and participate on the upcoming ones, go to productbooklab.com. To find out how to support the book club and help us keep it running without any ads, check the links in the description. I would say maybe let, let's, oh, yeah. let's start then. Uh, yeah, let's start the discussion. There's some people already online, so yeah, maybe more will we'll connect later on. But uh, I think uh, because Alison, you're new, maybe let's also start with a quick run of uh, introductions so that then we will know a bit more about each other. And I can start. I'm, I'm Carlos. Um, yeah, I work at Booking and I uh, yeah, sort of started that, the book club now some, some months ago. Uh, that's me. Timur, do you want to go next? Yes, so my name is uh, Timur. I'm a front-end developer and I'm also from booking.com. Yeah, Martin? Martin? Yeah. My name is uh, Martin. I'm a um, uh, uh, product manager at uh, Albert Heijn, an uh, online uh, groceries uh, delivery service in the Netherlands. Cindy? I'm Cindy. I'm a data scientist at Booking.com, also in the Netherlands. Yeah. Alison? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm Alison. I'm product manager at BrickBlock. We are a small fintech based in Berlin. Nice. So you're calling from Berlin? I'm calling from Berlin, yes. <laughs> nice. And uh, Ruslan? Uh, hi everyone, um, I'm uh, Ruslan, designer from Philips. I also haven't read the book, so I will, I'm curious about uh, <laughs> uh, your, your insights, guys. Thanks. Very good, it's nice. Cool. Uh, have, have you guys uh, seen or at least seen a bit about the book, uh, Alison Ruslan? Or did, did you hear about it before? Um, I think I think I've read about it because like we have an internal book reading list and I think I saw it in there uh, yeah. but I didn't yeah I didn't read that much not even a summary so yeah yeah I'm okay a bit blind here <laughs> yeah Carlos can you maybe give a short introduction about the book yeah yeah, yeah that's what I was gonna do uh, Indeed, uh, the book, I think, basically what it does is uh, talks a, a, a lot about different um, things that influence us when we want to make a decision or when we want to, uh, let's say, compare things, right? And uh, the book is uh, split in the different uh, chapters. I think each one of them, like all these different factors that would influence, like priors, emotions, incentives, agency, curiosity, etc. Uh, and then it basically talks about all the different... Uh, like behavioral rules, like psychology theories, and also more like, uh, she calls it biological principles, uh, that, you know, sort of like influence, uh, yeah, how, how we make decisions. And the nice thing that I like from the book is that, um, and I think towards the end, she also mentions it, that, oh, hello, Telly. Hi, hi. <laughs> hello. Hi, Carlos. How are you? Good to meet you, everyone. Good to see you. Carlos, I think we had a bit of a communication problem. Yes, I, I yes. didn't know which email to send. <laughs> I kept emailing you and I didn't, like, I don't think you got any of my emails for some reason. Oh, kept, yeah, no. You kept asking me again and again and I emailed you and I said, I emailed you again and again and again, but I think it probably went to your junk mail or something. Oh, yeah, I, I was even looking there, but, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. you, you joined, so that's good. thanks for joining. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, I was just asking you if you wanted me in the first half or the second half. Um, so I just joined now and I could stay until about 12.30, my time, Boston time, so then 25 minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, I thought you were in London because of UCL, but well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in Boston part of the time and in London part of the time, so now I'm in Boston. Okay, nice, mm -hmm. nice. Well, yeah, thanks again. Thanks for joining. Uh, I was just trying to, to summarize your book <laughs> to explain what, what it was I was saying. That, oh, it's a, it's a shame I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was about to, to, to start with the phrasing that what I was going to say, what I like is that, you know, besides, of course, mentioning all the different um, psychology theories or uh, biological principles that you mentioned, they, you also have always like a story next to it, right? Or, 
or an experiment that you say, and I think as well, you mentioned it at the end of the book that uh, I put the stories because then it's easier to remember it, right? And mm -hmm. I think indeed as well, I, I think I've read some of these like theories maybe before, but in it with the examples or with the experiments, then it's easier to, uh, to remember it. And then I think to, to explain it again to others, right? Uh, how does it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to understand it and also keep people engaged and then remember yeah. it, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if the others, maybe someone has a question to start. Uh... Um, yeah, so uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot for joining. Uh, uh, so I didn't pre pre prepare a list of questions uh, for you, but, why, but I, I would like to share while I was uh, reading the book, I was constantly reading because we are a product a group of product managers uh, 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 reading uh, re reading product related books, and um, uh, so con con while I was reading your book, um, I continu uh, continuously thought like, how do I apply these lessons? Because there's a variety of lessons uh, you describe in the book. How do I apply that in my regular? day-to-day uh, -day work in uh, in product management and I was thinking uh, about how this how this um, uh, how this is for you um, knowing ha having intimate knowledge of all these psychological um, effects do you see some of the products that you use on a daily basis where you think to yourself why do these people why do they does this product try to do this to me but it it, affect, it has the exact opposite effect of what it tries to do or or do you see some like um, opportunities in, in in the world around you where you think uh, you mentioned some things in, uh, in the book uh, like um, where, uh, about the, uh, washing the hands in in, um, in hospitals where you uh, explain that by making a relatively small product change in my, my the, uh, to me it's it's a, it's a product uh, highlighting how often people wash their hands increases how often people wash their hands. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can imagine that there's many different opportunities that you see in your your daily life uh, around you where you you think you see opportunities. I was curious to. Mm -hmm. And so, what what kind of products do you guys work on? What industry is this? It, it's uh, mainly, I mean, all te technology products. So oh, like app, like apps and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 ah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, no. So, so this is extremely, um, I guess, related and useful for those types uh, of products for sure. Um, and so, it's interesting uh, when you ask that. Um, I often see the opposite. So I often see like, oh, they're they're doing exactly this, right? Oh, they're giving me immediate reward. <laughs> You know, my, so, and especially it's true with apps, like, you know, I have my running app, so it gives yep. me like congratulations every time that I finish a run or did like an yeah. especially fast one or a long run. Um, and also like a reminder every so often and, and shows me my, my progress. Um, and so, especially in the technology uh, kind of environment and also like social media and those kind of things, um, you do see it quite a bit um, that people do use this, but it's true that sometimes, for example, I did work, actually it's a good, so I, it's interesting, automatically, uh, I, if, unless I try to, I actually automatically just see that they are using it, giving people agency and control and choice and so on. But it is when people come to me and say, oh, can you help with this specific product? That's when I actually see the op, you know, the, the, op, the opportunity to, to uh, do better. So in fact, I did work on a, on a product recently where they were trying to get people to eat um, vegan food. Uh, they mm -hmm. have these products that they send. And one thing that they did, um, they had, well, they were working on an app, but also it was a whole website trying to get people to sign up and then sending them uh, reminders and so on. And they did focus very much on the negative. Um, oh, yeah. It was, it was very much about scaring people um, about, oh, you should eat vegan, you know, because all this negative things will happen. Yeah. And it, yeah, so it, instead of, of on the positive sides of it. Um, and also, I think there was a lack of giving people agency to decide 
it was it was a kind of thing when they they give uh, they send out the the food every day to your once a week to your house and and so there was a, not a lot of of options for people to say a little bit about what they want or why they're doing it you know mm -hmm. so some people may do this for for environmental reasons sometimes for health uh, reasons and it was important to know why what is your motive for doing that because that yeah, would take in a, in you in a different direction yeah. that would change the way that you interact or for example they had um, Kind of each person had a mentor to help them um but there wasn't a lot of, of choice about do you actually want to talk to this person online or via video or via text and, and they kept texting you a lot so it felt like they were getting into your domain and you mm -hmm. were losing control and it was all the, the negative so it wasn't surprising that uh people may after a while decide well i don't want this right uh, yeah. instead of giving me the feeling of I'm doing better for a good reason. And there yeah. wasn't, the, I don't think there was, oh, they were also lacking social, um, social incentives. So one thing that they could do is have you do this while um, maybe if other people, other friends and family do it, and then, you know, are all in a group and you're progressing, each, pro each person's progress can be seen so you can compare yourself to others, but in a kind of positive way and people can give positive uh, indications to others. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that, that was one, one example yeah. that yeah, would, great could example. be done. Um, there's another project actually I worked on, um, and this was for um, one of the biggest food and beverage companies. Um, and that actually, they, they did, a, um, it was a mistake mostly in the past. It's interesting. So they, there's products that have the word diet on them. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that, that adding the word diet to a product is actually not great because it has negative connotations, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, diet yeah. is something bad. Um, and uh, that didn't really work well. So simply mm. changing the word diet to a more positive uh, yeah. word yeah. Um, helped sales quite a bit. Yeah. But for example, with, with this sort of like, um, I, I don't know how, how, how you define it, like principles or rules, right? That for example, rewards is better than a punishment. Do you then also see maybe that uh, it might apply or not apply to a certain um, segment or to a certain condition? Because I think as well on another part of the book, you give uh, an example with um, that we are usually more open to hear good news, right? Right mm -hmm. than, than bad news. But if you are already under stress, then sort of you start becoming more receptive to bad news, right? So I like that because it was it applies usually, but under this other condition, then this something else might happen, right? Uh, because with rewards, you know, I think I've also read a lot that, for example, rewards is good, but then at the long run, it's not good because then when the reward is taken out, then the person also loses the motivation, right? Um, but yeah, when, when doing these experiments or, or, you know, trying to come up with these uh, rules, let's say, how do you also then see that you know, if there might be a segment or a specific case where maybe this doesn't apply that much, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you, I make the point that um, you know it's not like gravity that that yeah, is yeah, correct, true. and even gravity, there are some exceptions in different <laughs> contexts, right? So um, yeah. it, it's quite complex. And so what we try to do is say, well, this works in most circumstances, but look, there the context matter, the the person yeah. matters as well. Um, yeah. different things like even psychopathology are you depressed or not depressed um, and so one thing that matters a lot and I study a lot is stress because mm -hmm. under stress we do start focusing quickly I mean our experiments show that I stress you out immediately you start focusing on the negative you listen to the negative and so it's important to consider for example you know you're looking if the product goes to a large population you need to make an assumption on on what most people or the mean Right. But yeah. for example, we're in a pandemic. So you could say, well, this is going to be different, right? Especially in the beginning of the pandemic, everyone was under stress. And so that yeah. does change quite a bit what people would respond to. Um, or you can think about what kind of, what is a demographic that I'm, you know, selling to is a specific one that's under stress, like middle aged individuals with, you know, kids or something. So these are things to consider and then of course at the end of the day the best thing to do is trial and error right to do yeah to test things out and to see whether okay these are kind of rules that work you know a lot of the time but does it actually fit in this specific uh yeah. circumstance yeah 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 makes sense 
I have uh, one question. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about emotions and that emotions are like they are convincing uh, people faster and they're convincing it uh, maybe even irrational decisions, like to do irrational decisions. And you uh, made an example with the vaccination. Um, do you think that uh, uh, to actually convince for the rational decision, we might also use uh, emotions? Or maybe have you seen maybe posters or advertisements about like do vaccination because it's better or otherwise it would be worse for your kid and, and etc. So, and do you think it's ethical or what's your point of, of view about using emotions? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you could definitely use emotions to nudge people in either direction, right? Um, whether it's a direction that you think is right or you think is wrong, um, whether it's one that you call rational or not, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. And the, the thing about emotion, we have emotion because it gives us a quick evaluation of, you know, the different outcomes and, and the circumstances. So it's not something bad. Um, yeah. In fact, people who don't have emotional responses, people with impairment in the amygdala, they, they face a lot of difficulties and, and problem in decision making. So this is not something that's interfering with our decision making. Um, yeah. It is actually something that in general, in most cases, help us. But like anything else, you know, there could be instances where it takes us in, in the wrong direction. So it's not a case that we don't want to have emotion. Like being afraid is, is, is great. I mean, you need to be afraid in order to not, you know, jump off a cliff or run yeah. into the street, right? It's yeah. good that we have that. And that kind of like takes us into the right direction. So it's not something that we wanted to kind of not use. I mean, something that we won't, we wouldn't want our brain not to have. Um, in terms, um, so you can definitely use it. Now, in terms of, of the ethics, um, I think there's two questions. Uh, one is, is it okay to nudge people in any direction, right? Um, so you can answer that question and, you know, there's no, to any ethical questions, I don't think there's one answer. Um, in yeah. my opinion, um, it is, of course, the question is, what is the right decision, right? I mean, yeah. what, what is good, of course, if I think, oh, it's, it's good for you to stay healthy, but, you know, I think a vaccine is good, but maybe you can say, well, um, there are risks and so on. So yeah. um, first you have to answer the question, do, is it ethical to nudge people at all? And then if you say it is ethical, then you can ask, well, is it okay to use emotions? And I guess um, there are two specific things about emotions that you want to consider. One is if you're inducing a negative emotion, then you are inducing a negative state to someone right so mm -hmm. you want them to go you want them to get to this good place but in in the way to get there you're inducing a negative thing and so that's the question is is that okay and is it kind of the means is is more important than you know the way to get there that's the question and then i think the other question is a lot of people may say if you give me just um data um you know data is going to also induce emotion but let's say you give me neutral data and i use that to make a decision then it feels to people like it's more under their controlling conscious uh control yeah. kind of say if you give them if you do this in a more unconscious way people feel they don't have uh agency right so you're you're kind of nudging them without them knowing yeah um so i don't have an edit I don't really know if I have an ethical answer to it. Um, it it's more kind of the, 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 whether the outcome matters. And, and I also think that it's really difficult to give any kind of uh, data on such important issues that won't induce emotion, right? Like let's say vaccination. Yeah. yeah. I think any data that you would give can, can induce either hope or can induce fear. And so I, in many ways, there's no much way around it. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a bit different from having like, you know, some, some uh, advertisements have this kind of like sub uh, liminal presentation of things to, yeah. to nudge you one day. And so that's a whole different thing, you know, that, that perhaps is, is kind of iffy. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, from our experience, uh, and, or at least my own experience, maybe you, I think, I expect most of you will recognize this, is that um, using uh, fear, for instance, fear of selling out or fear of time running out, 
are uh, like using fear at the moment of selling something uh, like works crazily. Like it works yeah. like a charm. And uh, because people are, are worried they would lose out uh, on, on a deal or on a, and uh, there and it is and I uh, and most of the information that you're you're sharing, you could say is neutral. Like uh, there's only this this many rooms left, or uh, there's only uh, ten minutes uh, that you can uh, uh, that this auction will will end in ten minutes. It's very, it's like it's it's true. It's a fact that the, the yeah. auction will end in ten minutes. Uh, however, uh, by displaying it in a certain way, or it can induce more or less fear. And in my experience, the more fear you induce, the the, the more people will click. Yeah. On uh, and more people will, will actually buy. They make a um, so um, uh, like how how. My, so my question is, how do you do this in a in a responsible manner? Like, how, what is what are the um, in your view in your experience? What are the the what are the boundaries that we should um, observe when 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 doing these, it, it, you know, uh, mechanics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a good question. It's interesting when when we think about the kind of things that you say, we we call it urgency. Yeah, um, yeah. That there's like an urgency. Think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I I can see how it's related to fear. Um, but usually when we think about those mechanisms, we think about um, urgency. Um. um whether it is it is okay um to do that um yeah i i, I don't know you know it, it to me i think what matters more um is what i guess is is the goal but you can't i mean you can't not you can't get around it you know people yeah. if, if things work people would work it and i think the best solution to these problems is educating the public um and, and yeah. that's not necessarily to say that it won't work if they're educated, right? Um, yeah. But I, I think it, it, it will be maybe helpful um, to people, for, the, for them to know yeah. what is being used. Um, and, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, because that, I, I also sort of like um, thought of that when reading all the well, like you said, right, if you understand or you educate yourself as well on how to trigger certain reactions or certain effects, uh, the, the other side is that then you also know how to uh, make them happen, right? I think uh, the example that resonated a lot with me was that uh, uh, in order for, I think, users to like something more, they, they need to feel that they have um, participated in something. Mm -hmm. and, and then it even says, and they don't really need to have participated, but just to have the, the sense that they did, right? Uh, and this, for example, to me as a product manager in a team, also felt like, oh, so then I can make the others feel that they sort of participated, they had control, but you know, really they, they didn't have, right? But, but now everyone supports my idea, let's say, because I made everyone feel like they, they had some control, right? Um, so there is always a thing that, that uh, the other side of the coin, right, that, uh, how you use it. Um, and I think maybe similar to, to Martin's question, right, I, I haven't seen much uh, books or literature, maybe, maybe I haven't found it, in like how to avoid this or, or kind of, um, yeah, like, I don't know, principles on, on you know, how, how to not make this harm other people, right? Because, for example, with... Uh, I don't know, uh, artificial intelligence. Now there is a lot of, well, we're also trying to write down some principles on one thing, what we should do, what we should not do, right? Of course, it's not certain, but because everyone sort of understands that something can go wrong, can go wrong. But with all uh, these other uh, books of like, you know, uh, yeah, how to nudge people or how to trigger certain reactions, I also have se haven't seen that much discussion into what kind of uh, guidebook we can have to not make some things, uh, to not have some bad things happening, right, at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the way, there's a the book called The Ethics of Nudge, and that's written by Cass Steinstein. So the same person who okay. wrote Nudge ha has a book that's called The Ethics of Nudge, um, okay. which right. can kind of probably answer some of these questions. Um, 
but um, to me, the most important thing is, is, is mostly if you're working towards a valuable goal, you know, that you at least think is, is helpful for, for yeah. most people. So, you know, most of the projects that, you know, I tend to work on and, and actually it's most of the requests tend to be things that I kind of believe in, you know, mm. um, help people eat better, you know, drink less sugar, things like that. And it's a personal thing, but I don't feel too bad about um, using all sorts of things yeah. to kind of <laughs> nudge them towards that direction. But for example, I had a request for um, helping like a, a cigarette company. So for that, I just say no, it's easy. Yeah. Right? I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting both philosophical and ethical question on whether, on what is kind of right or wrong in yeah. terms of just the mechanism, regardless of, of what, what you're working towards. Um, but I guess the way that I solve it is more just, is the goal one that, that I believe in. Yeah. Can yeah. help other people or not. Yeah. The way where I um, recognized myself most in the book, um, I'm a data scientist, so I'm a very analytical person. And the example of the more people are analytically skilled, the more <laughs> they will find ways to twist whatever data is presented to them to fit their yeah. preconceived notions. I found that uh, very true. So whenever I hear something, I'm like, yeah, but they probably didn't do that. Or they, what, what about that? And I find like a hundred questions to, before they even made their point of what they wanted to try to convince me. And I'm just wondering how, how am I then ever supposed to change my mind on things where I may be wrong? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean, I, I, I feel exactly the same. And I think a lot of scientists are probably very similar, right? Uh, we do exactly, exactly the same. Um, so one thing that, that we do is, you know, so for example, you, you reach a conclusion based on your data and, and it fits with your theories and maybe it fits with what you want to see. Um, what is helpful is to give that to someone that doesn't have um, any motivation or any like priors, right? So you're working on a specific project. And this is kind of what we do in science. I mean, it works to some extent. Of course, it's not perfect. But, you know, I have my theory. I collect my data. I kind of have something that I want to see, and then I write it up. But then I have to give it to people who, who are not part of the project. And they don't have a specific theory that they want to, to push forward. Um, yeah. And they, and, you know, they will look at the data and say, well, look, what about this and that and that? Um, and if, you know, most of them think it's wrong, I have to acknowledge it's, it's probably wrong, or at least it's wrong enough for me not, it's not a good idea to put it forward and you take the risk. Um, so, it, so I think one helpful way is um, to have people that are neutral, don't have a motivation to assess the same data, to see whether they then get to the same conclusion or you know, they support the way that you reached your conclusion. Yeah. So then it's also fair to say, so if I read news and the news are in contrast to what I believe, then I could also just ask myself, well, do I think this is in contrast to what I believe because I just don't want to believe the other side to be true? Or is it because I, I truly question the data? Yeah, I, th I think um, we, we, we know that any time that we read something that we want to be true, we're more likely to believe it. And I think it is helpful in, our, in the back of our mind to be aware of it, um, for sure. And, and vice versa as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing is, um, despite the fact that you will interpret it, news or data in the way that you want, um, it is perhaps helpful how many times you observe the same opinion, you know? Um, and so in that case, if at least your search for your news can be neutralized such that you won't, at least won't get more from the thing that you want to see that that's helpful. And so that you could use technology for that, right? Like, um, yeah, and not, not put, you know, try to like de this, um, uh, click, uh, off the like history, your geography location and those kind of things, or, you know, make sure that on social media, you follow as well people from the other side. So at least you're getting input 
that will be a little bit more um, unbiased. Yeah. There, there was one, uh, one other part, or, uh, sorry, did you want someone wanted to ask? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to ask, there was one part as well of the book where you talk about that, um, I would read that the more uncertain the future is perceived to be, the less likely we are to forego of uh, immediate gratification in favor of future uh, bliss, right? Which I think I also sort of like recognize or like uh, felt the struggle because for example, now uh, working as well in, in technology in the uh, travel industry, that, you know, it's very uncertain, right? And to a certain degree, I also need to convince the team and everyone in, in, in working here that, well, the, you know, reality is that we, we might not know what's gonna happen, but you need to still sort of like sell them this uh, long-term vision, right? That there is something that is not going to take two weeks or a month to deliver to do, but uh, but at the same time, like you said, that there is a lot of uncertainty, right? So people might be laid off, or maybe that the whole product doesn't make sense anymore because you know a lot of the trends are changing now. And uh, what? How do you how do you see, or what what I don't know techniques or what other things could we do to sort of help people, um, you know, still believe in that long-term uh, potential benefit when we know that the time is indeed uncertain. Mm -hmm. So I think one helpful thing is to try and think, are there immediate benefits? Mm -hmm. So you're trying to convince them of that path because of the long-term future benefits. Yeah. But is there anything immediate that they can gain from that? And that mm -hmm. gain can be different from the long-term gain. Yeah. So, for example, if the, if the long term gain is mon like monetary and it will fit, but it may be in the, in the short term, you will get um, it will be like a, a good publicity thing for, for the public or something like that. Or, um, yeah. So it's to try to think, how can I frame it in a way that they're also sure or well, not sure, but, you know, as, as sure as you can get immediate yeah rewards and not only long-term rewards. So this is kind of, you know, a bank trying to get you to invest your money in the long term and giving you like a little candy, right? I mean, yeah. I'm exaggerating, but you know, they give you like tickets for movies or something like that. So they give you some immediate rewards. Um, they're smaller, but and you're not investing for those immediate rewards, but you have some immediate rewards um, and that kind of bridges the long-term gap. Uh, it could also be emotional rewards. So if I put my money in for, for the future um, when I retire, I'm doing it for when I retire, but it gives me less anxiety at the moment, knowing yeah. that I did that act, or it gives me more sense of control and agency. Um, so important to try to focus on the present and not just on the future. Yeah, yeah. okay. Good, and then, Thanks. so um, I have, uh, I'm gonna have to leave you guys to, uh, to continue chat between yourself and, and join my students on another call but um i really enjoyed this this was really thank, really thank fun and uh yeah if, if, feel free to email me if you have other questions i, I wanted to ask if we can okay. take a screenshot we always take a screenshot oh yes yes that. yes yeah, oh, I, if the others have it i don't yeah <laughs> mine is in the other room so <laughs> <laughs> no worries <laughs> yeah okay, uh, have it on the video. okay <laughs> let me take a screenshot Do yeah. you have it cindy <laughs> Cindy, what are you doing? <laughs> She's finding it on her. Yes. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, bad. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. That's a big one. <laughs> uh, it's not on the front page. <laughs> this is a lot easier with the book actually being. All right. <laughs> cool. Three, two, one. All right. Thank you okay. so much. Thank, Thank you so you. Much, very bye much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 All right. Man, that was unexpected. I didn't believe she would. Yeah, that's a nice surprise. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> I don't know where all her emails were going then because they definitely were not in my spam. Or... <laughs> but well, anyways. Um, do you guys feel like discussing a bit more or. Uh... Are yeah. there any other points that maybe you wanted to cover with her that, uh, well, I mean, she, she ran out of time? Yeah, so I wanted to, um, uh, to, to, uh, I'm also interested to hear your thoughts on it. Um, mm -hmm. We, in the book, there's a, there's a quite a passage about how, uh, if you're in, like, let's say, it's my words, uh, flight or fight mode, mm -hmm. maybe it's mm -hmm. meant to fight or fight mode in the book. 
um, then you that is prone to influence your decision making. Yeah. And I very much recognize that in uh, not necessarily in in a, a product uh, related setting, but in a general work related setting, like when when uh, or uh, or even in a in a in a leisure setting, like playing chess. Mm-hmm. If I'm if I play chess and I'm uh, I think I've uh, lost something or if I if I've won something, then like uh, then my I feel it immediately in my decision making process. It's not going as rational as it is it normally. And so my um, uh, question is like, how do you guys uh, get out of this flight or fight mode? Because it's not it's unless you're in a flight or fight situation, it's not useful. Mm-hmm. Mindfulness. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was worried about that. Uh, but I mean, if you if yeah. you already know that you're in fight or flight mode and that you feel that your decisions are influenced, then you're kind of half there, right? So then yeah, that's a good one. it's basically okay. I I feel that I'm really stressed right now. Let yeah. me just get out of the situation. Like get up and take a step aside, breathe. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that's possible. But chess, it probably is. In a yeah. meeting. It's it's kind yeah. of meh, but these days mm-hmm. even video calls it's indeed right. You turn off your camera and you be like, okay, let me just breathe for a yeah. minute, like you know, and then I yeah. like, step back into the game, and yeah. everything is gonna be better afterwards because you know you just feel better, and then there's less stress yeah. and less. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you can say that your Wi-Fi is flaky. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, nice things. But I also, I, I wondered, so for, uh, in my work, I often present results. And obviously I struggle the most when, what I, like the typical setup that we have at Booking is, there's a question that a stakeholder is interested in with, and they're mostly coming with a preconceived belief, like, hey, this is working. And the question is, how much is this working and not, is this working? And then when I find that, well, it might not be working, then, (laughs) or, you know, or for example, I want to find out that it's not working because I don't believe in the product. Um, That's less often the case, but happened as well. Then there's always the point of, okay, how, how do I frame my analysis to actually convince the people of what I want? And I guess then we're right back to what is ethical. And in most, like, I mean, I am very aware that if I were to leave out certain data points that support the other direction, that is unethical. And in a business yeah. context, that's also just plain unprofessional. Like if I just present the data points that were to support my point of view, and I have checked the others, and I know that, oh, you know, they actually point, support the other point of view, then I'm not talking about that. But in, in some situations, I'm really wondering and how I can use the idea of what's the emotional state of my, um, my, the partner whom I'm talking to in, in order to, to get my point across. Yeah. I, I don't really know how I'm supposed to influence that if there's already the preconceived notion. Yeah. Yeah. But what I liked best about the, the book, I think may, maybe the, the point that, that, uh, it, and it's related to to to, uh, to your question. It doesn't answer completely, maybe, but it's to look for the shared, uh, the common uh, values. Yeah. yeah. And like, and that for me, uh, that was for me really an eye opener. So. Um, yeah. And that, and I do that. I do my I myself do li- too little of that. So uh, because I I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But how because then you, you can. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go sure. Ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. No, no, finish your sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I, I still have so, one point. <laughs> um, the, uh, I, I liked it because if you do that, then you can, you, you, you can, uh, if you see that it lands, that you have, that you, that there's some, uh, then from, the, from that uh, shared value, you can have a, actually a good conversation. And in the example in the in the book is about the vaccinations, and I don't want to go into like mm-hmm. sorry for the but it, but, uh, leave your remarks in the comments and on YouTube. <laughs> but um, but uh, the, is uh, like let's first st- start that we care about the health of our children, 
Yeah. And then, uh, and that, of course, like, uh, then you can have a have a have a good discussion. Yeah. I don't know if it's. Yeah. Yeah. What I was gonna say is, in those situations when I have a meeting and I know that the people in front of me are kind of expecting that, as you say, I mean, it's not a question of. Is it going to work? Yes, no. They are already thinking, okay, it's working, but how much? And when I come and I say, okay, uh, let's not do that, actually. I first try to have a meeting before the meeting mm -hmm. with every single person, because then it's easier to find a common ground because you're only facing one person. You don't have three people in front of you and have to find something that every single person kind of is sharing. And you have those meetings before where you can, it's, I don't have like tips or tricks because I, whatever, but the, it's easier to convince one person when if they have an argument, it won't be reinforced by someone else's argument. And then you, all of the, all of a sudden you have three people against you and, yeah. and then it's hard to react. And when I do this and I actually manage to get those people like kind of convinced, then we go into a meeting, everyone in the same room and there is actually nothing to discuss because we all already agreed that we are not going to do it. Like, yeah. so the meeting before the meeting, uh, it, it does require a bit of time, but it's helpful because then you actually go into that meeting and you know that you already have like a couple of people bought in into your idea and that, and, and they will actually reinforce your points and maybe help convince some others that you maybe did not manage to convince before. Okay. So that, that helped me actually. Okay. Um, yeah. There's, there, is, there is also another part of the book that she talks about um, that, of course, right, pre-established pre opinions are, are usually difficult to change. Uh, and then she mentioned that there are four factors, right, uh, when you try to communicate a, a new one, which I like because I always thought it was, okay, what is your old belief? And then what is a new belief? And then can I convince a new one instead of the old one, right? But then she points out that there is an old one, the new one, of course, but also uh, how much confidence you have on the evidence that supports the old one and how much evidence you have for the new one, right? Which I think is also good sometimes to highlight because it did, people might have a preconceived uh, idea or opinion that, for example, something is working, but I don't know. But then when you ask, like, you know, why do you even think that? Uh, oh, because I saw an experiment or a project from, you know, five years ago, I, I'm not even sure how it was set up, or I'm not even sure how much it was working, but I, you know, people would say that it's working, so that's what I would do, right? So if you also highlight, I think, that evidence that you have to support the old belief against, you know, this new evidence that you would have, that is, uh, look, now we have run a proper experiment, you know, uh, this, this, uh, this is all the data that I have now to back it up, et cetera, et cetera. I think then it also be at least I, when I read it, I was like, then it should be easier to convince people of the new belief, right? I, I think. Um, because, you know, it, it's not anymore about don't believe that, believe this, but also that the evidence and the confidence that you have in it. Uh, so I, I found that a, a very good point. Um, I have a few outcomes out of the book uh, that I re really like. Um, actually, some of them are uh, applicable not only um, in the product uh, development, but also in life. And uh, one of the things that uh, Martin uh, had just mentioned is about finding these common grounds uh, when you are yeah. actually uh, arguing. I think this is much better. And actually there are some arguments in the book why it's like m better uh, and it might work uh, better compared to just uh, uh, throwing arguments because another person just won't uh, listen and won't understand you. So that's what I'm going to use uh, in my day-to-day -day life after reading this book. Um, but from a product perspective, it also has a lot of uh, uh, advice. Uh, one of the things according to social influence that uh, there was a, a research that um, if first uh, comment, uh, if the first uh, comment under the video or under the thing or like first review under the restaurant, is positive more there are more yeah. results than other that, restaurants uh, the, yeah. the more, more other reviews will be positive about this restaurant and yeah. it's like 36 percent uh, more so yeah. it's like it's a lot uh so it might be it's good actually to write one fake review uh or at least uh, <laughs> a review from uh, your friends that who is really using it uh that, that will be benefit 
it shows beneficial uh, yeah. benefits for, for, for it uh, to actually convince other uh, people to start using it. So this is small life. Yeah, sorry, maybe. sorry to interrupt you more, but sure. it, like, could you guys please at the, because at the, at all time we don't have a lot of reviews, <laughs> uh, but could you so could you please like verify your <laughs> statement? Is. Just like see how how true it is. Like if you end a hackathon or something. I'm very curious. You don't have to share any numbers, but yeah. I'm very curious whether that that uh, that uh, hypothesis holds up for for booking uh, reviews. Yeah, um, but I think it would be unethical. So basically, what the hypothesis would be, um, not the first not review impacts, but, uh, but outsourcing yeah. positive reviews, especially if reviews are low, then what. Well, mm, I think it will be unethical if you were to upsort only positive reviews, yeah. while negative reviews yeah. came in first from a time point of view. So I mean, yeah, it's I, not it's it's not actionable, I don't know, maybe, but it's, but I'm very curious. <laughs> maybe it's borderline because upsorting is not hiding, right? It's yeah. not like you you just don't show the negative reviews. So you know, if there's only five reviews, well, then you start with a positive one, and people can still scroll down, and they will see the other negative ones. Yeah, so, so I, I, how I interpret it is it, you get your first review and then the second review will be partly based on the experience and partly on the first review. Yeah. And then, yeah, it, that, and, and, then, and then there's regression. Yeah. yeah. But that is where it would get unethical. So say your first two, first two review is negative and you don't show it until you get a first yeah. positive review. And that is yeah, something that is point. not yeah. ethical to do. I don't think so either. No, I think yeah, yeah. Do. But I, I'm still very curious to <laughs> see whether this, this hypothesis is actually true or not. Because I can hardly imagine if it's a horrible experience and you have a great first review, then like... Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. but I think it, indeed to, to me that the main question that always comes to my mind when I read all these uh, nudge or persuasion or influence books is like, Indeed, then how do you define what is good or ethical or, or, or whatever, right? Um, and that's what yeah. I was asking her. Like, I'm very curious now for this book that she recommended on uh, ethics. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I think, we... like, like, like we said, right? reviews, maybe it's, it's quite uh, easy to all agree that if we hide the bad reviews, then it's bad, right? But with other things, like, I don't know, I always think that after the, the, the harm, let's say, has been done, then everyone will always find a reason to say that something is good, that is helping, right? And then some other people will have the opposite uh, uh, opinion. Yeah, and, so the, you know, once it's out there, then it's very difficult to, to agree, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would really like to, to read the book for the club, if, yeah. uh, if you guys agree. I'm very yeah. curious about the book. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. Ethics of Nurture, so. Yeah, I, I will search it. Yeah. yeah. One of the things to mention that in the book, um, there was a whole chapter about um, that uh, people in different mood might uh, make different uh, decisions. And this is uh, for me, like in, um, in our day to day work, actually might be applicable for email marketing. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'm receiving, like, I'm subscribed for this specific uh, email uh, campaign, and uh, I'm opening maybe one or two emails out of 10. Like why I'm still subscribed for it and why I'm receiving it, and it actually made it because I have a good mood or like mood that like I really want to check all emails and or I want to check this specific email because sometimes when I'm busy and I'm in hurry, just don't have a time for it and I'm um, skipping it. I'm not uh, reading it, but for me it's uh, kind of applicable for 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 for, for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alison, you you mentioned you work in a fintech company right yeah is there more like um i don't know regulation or something uh if you guys want to nudge people to do something more or, or less related to finance or or how have, have you experienced something yeah i think i'm i'm also not doing like b2c finance like we are providing a platform for fund managers to okay. launch their funds and okay. we're dealing with professional investors that invest millions mm -hmm. so i mean i and, and 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 it's very protected i mean we really have to check that the people that come in through our portal are actually eligible and who they say they are mm -hmm. um, so we the we have very little leeway to kind of influence people i mean the the only way we can do that is by putting a bit 
big button that says invest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then we can't have anyone just invest. So it's pretty, we have very little, le like, yeah, leeway yeah. to do any kind of things like this. It's a hyper regulated industry, like the, like the yeah. alternative investment funds. Um, Hmm. In case you're interested, but uh, <laughs> it's a very it's very niche, uh, yeah, and very regulated. So we 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 can't really do whatever we want, so you, and you the due diligence tell, uh, processes of our client is pretty hardcore. So yeah, you, you cannot tell like uh, ten people just invested in this thing. Let's <laughs> do <laughs> I don't, yeah, know we, I don't know if we would be allowed to share those information even. It might, it might be protected that we can't say that how many people have invested. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And also our clients might not want us to share that. Yeah. Like at, at some point, it's actually an interesting example. We, we wanted to show to the people that invested into a fund, okay, so you've invested, now the fund still needs to raise 150 million and show that in a nice graph so that you know when the fund is closing and you can like wait for it. And then basically our clients were saying, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want our clients to know how we are performing because then if they see that it stays like this for a couple of weeks, days slash weeks mm. they might be wondering what we're doing start freaking out and pull out yeah yeah so mm -hmm. it's a question of like how much information they want to disclose that won't freak out their clients yeah so, so it's not even a question of regulation there i think they could say hey we've raised 15 million out of the 50 million it's just they don't want to share that because it might freak people out yeah yeah so we can't even have nice graphs at all. Yeah. <laughs> pretty sad. <laughs> pretty sad. Yeah. Maybe I can add that uh, I think those things um, should be shaped as a part of brand, how companies uh, treat their customers, and yeah, um, that's uh, I think where it should come from. If uh, you want to treat your customers uh, with respect, if you believe your products, uh, you don't need to trick people to sell something, then yeah you shouldn't do it and then yeah i think apple is a great example right they don't force you however they use other tricks right with the, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, performance and all this stuff but it's uh, for people it looks more natural and yeah. at least they don't experience fear or urgency right uh, when they look at the presentation or landing, landing page and uh, i think yeah it's m much more difficult to do than you know create sense of urgency that's why i think it, it becomes so popular yeah yeah i, I think it is i think tally also mentioned it right that i don't think there is one product where there is no uh where, where something is not influencing the user right i think it's more like how how elegant the solution is uh, like you said right uh, apple maybe of course it doesn't tell you uh, i don't know only two iphones left or whatever um but like people do feel influenced to buy the latest one, right? Or to pay that much uh, crazy high price. Um, so yeah, I think it's yeah indeed like like you said, right? Maybe how more the the brand wants to treat the user and, and how much effort maybe they put to to not yeah. do it the easy way, maybe right? Like maybe. Yes. But that's also an example because I work at Philips and. Um, there are some things that are just not acceptable, even if it uh, might have a positive effect on conversion and we can sell much more, just brand does not accept this kind of, um, you know, influence on customers. Okay. Um, oh, nice. that's, uh, and I think it should happen more and more because, yeah, yeah, basically it's not part of the brand. It becomes a part of, um, you know, <laughs> selling. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask um, uh, Tali, it's about uh, evolution. That evolution uh, has happened and is happening for very slow. Uh, and nowadays we have technology um, that gives us a huge amount of information. And in the book that actually explains that information is very valuable and very reward, like uh, getting information is very rewarding for, for our brains. And um, for example, Facebook, it just gives you a lot of information. It just keeps scrolling and you just spend time uh, taking this uh, 
and your brain rewarding it for you. Um, and the question was about uh, like how it's going to you know, change or how society is going to change because it won't be possible to change our brains fast. Uh, maybe uh, after millions of years, yeah, we will be able to leave Facebook. Uh, but nowadays, it's 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 very hard. And um, what your thoughts about uh, if there will be some uh, society rules for uh, for social networks or for this huge amount of information? Because, for example, we have a lot of food, and also when we eat food, our body gives us a lot of. Uh, uh, positive hormones and positive uh, mood and we have a downside we have uh, obesity we have a lot of like uh, health problems because of it and we know solutions like society recommends us to do sport and etc um, and tries to like go healthy is it going to be the same with uh, social network like go healthy like consume healthy information or is there, is there going to be like um, in the school something related to uh, information, uh, information hygiene. So, yeah, what's your thoughts about it? I, I, I think because, yeah, I think that the main difference I think where I see it is more difficult is that, like you said, right, with food, it's very immediate that you realize that, okay, I cannot eat more, right, and, and, and that's it. Whereas you could literally be the whole day watching uh, TikTok and Netflix, I don't know, yeah. you fall asleep probably, right? But it's not that uh, immediate. But, you know, I think now there are more and more of those studies that uh, make people depressed, right? And well, a lot of things. I think they are also sort of, sort of started to acknowledge it. That's why they're doing a lot of this, uh, you know, well, Apple also, like Google pushing this, uh, like now you can set a limit, right, on, on apps or uh, you can also set like uh, what time you go to sleep, right? Or I, I, I'm not sure of the initiative, but they are, trying to do something because I think they also know that it's not uh, sustainable, let's say, right? To just have people keep being more and more and more engaged because, I, I don't know, I think they also already acknowledge it. Maybe they don't push it that much for the solution, but at least I see some initial steps, right? Uh, of course, I don't know if it's good enough uh, to be a first one, but... I mean... Yeah, you... on the... Sorry, you see me going. If you were to push it to the limit, then people might just help, for, help themselves for consuming your product, right? Yeah. Or if you spend the whole weekend on Netflix, and on Monday you hear other, your colleagues, friends say, oh yeah, we went out and we had the nicest time in the park, and you know, now we have a sunburn. Well, hopefully not, but you know. Uh, and then, and you just say, oh yeah, well, I binge watched next Netflix because I forgot to turn about to play or whatever, right? And it, it also just, it doesn't give you a nice feeling, right? So in that sense, mm. if it might be good for the product in the short term, but if you're then after the fourth week in doing that, you may be like, yeah, that's it. I'm going to quit Netflix. Yeah. And then it's, like, it's like, it's an addiction, right? Well, you go cold turkey and then you're not going to go back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think right now in um, um, iPhones and in, in mobile devices, there are a lot of uh, uh, customization uh, for notifications and for example you can disable some notification for specific app or for specific time so i think uh, yeah it's kind of companies are understanding this problem that it's not healthy and it might be actually harmful for users so it's uh, it's good that um, industry tries to solve this yeah, yeah. yeah on an individual level i also hear people around me saying uh oh, I don't watch uh, the news anymore. Only in the weekend I watch the news. Or uh, I think it's a very, like, it's just like um, uh, exercising. Like exercising mm -hmm. is good for your body. And I think uh, not exposing yourself to too much uh, um, uh, news junk. factoids. Kind yeah, of. information junk. That's also a very, like for your mental health, it's a very, very, can be a very wise choice, depending a little bit on, on a person to person level. Yeah. yeah. I do feel that the, the awareness around this is, is increasing. Yeah, indeed. Cool. G guys, I see the hour has come to an end. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank, thanks everyone. Uh, nice that Sally joined. So I think nice as well that you guys got to, to make her uh, questions. And uh, yeah, 
Thanks, everyone. We took the screenshot, so I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, Alison. Well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah uh, thanks. I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, mm. see you then. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye bye. Hey everyone, I'm Carlos and welcome to a new book discussion of productbooklab.com. Every month we discuss online a book about product management together with the author and other product colleagues. If you want to find the recordings from our previous discussions and also join us and participate on the upcoming ones, go to productbooklab.com. To find out how to support the book club and help us keep it running without any ads, check the links in the description.